There are only two games left to go in the year for the UTSA Roadrunners, and for the first time this entire season, they are favored on the road, headed to New Orleans to take on Tulane. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the UTSA Dynasty. Pretty soon we're going to conclude Season 2 in this series and head on to Season 3. We have a lot of recruits coming in and some guys we're really excited for. If you did not see it, I'll have it linked in an annotation probably on this video. The recruiting update I did where I showed all the guys that have committed, their attributes, and all the guys I'm still going for. It's a really good update on the series and it gets you kind of in line with who we're getting in this team and kind of the direction we're going with with some of the recruits. And also, you get to see potentially our next year's starting quarterback after Eric Souza graduates. But anyways, we're here in Tulane on the road, ready to get back into action after a disappointing loss last week in the last minute of the game. It was a true heartbreaker, and of course, it also broke our hearts to see Evans Okacha is out for the rest of the season. So expect to see a lot of David Glasgow and Anthony Banks, and we'll get into the action with UTSA on offense. Eric Souza leading the way on first down and 10. He goes down on this drop back. He is sacked for a loss of eight after scrambling for a first down very nicely. He has a lot of speed, remember that. But now on third and 18, Souza's got to find a way to convert, and he dumps it off to Anthony Banks, closing in on the first down marker. He gets it about 19 yards ahead for a first down. The electrifying freshman, Anthony Banks, what a spark he has had on this team. And now David Glasgow up the gut for about six yards, playing in place of Evans Okacha, of course. Third and three, Souza looking for that conversion again. In the pocket, scrambling, throws last second. It's caught by Cam Jones downfield inside the 30-yard line. And a new set of downs for the Roadrunners. As Tulane sends a house blitz, but Souza gets a throw off to David Morgan over the middle. It's good for nine. Now Souza in the pocket, rolling out to his right. Has Freeman double covered. Going to send him long now, throwing it deep. And it's intercepted. If you put a little bit more air underneath that pass, it's probably six points for Brandon Freeman. But it was a little underthrown and allowed the defensive back to jump it and make an interception on a great play. And so that drive goes for nothing, obviously, for UTSA. And now Tulane has the football. Their quarterback is Jordan Joseph. They're led on offense by Joseph Orleans Darkwell, the running back, and their star receiver, Justin Shackelford, who makes his catch on a screen pass, but he ends up losing yards. And so UTSA gets the football back, and on second down, David Glasgow goes nowhere up the middle. He was tackled in the backfield for a loss of two. That will bring up third and 12. Souza throwing long for Freeman, and it's jumped by Derek Strozer. Two-lane football again after Eric Souza's second turnover in a row. But if you look at the replay here, here's who I was actually throwing it to. Jeremiah Moeller, wide open. Eric Souza just airmails it, well, a little bit anyway, in the direction of Brandon Freeman, and it was intercepted. So it's two-lane ball again. Dark one, the backfield, play action. And Joseph's going to go long left side deep, and it's picked off by Eric Brown. Third total interception of the first quarter. UTSA gets the ball back and now is trying to get back on offense without getting an interception on this drive, hopefully. Souza hands it to Banks out of the shotgun, takes it off, tackle on the left side. He gets about nine yards before he's driven out of bounds. They would then convert next play in a new set of downs. Souza under pressure, looking to take off. He has green in front of him, but a flag on the play as he runs out of bounds and is hit late. It's not called. But the penalty on the play was a holding call, so UTSA got backed up, and now another handoff to Anthony Banks up the left side. He has another solid carry, though. He's been very consistent, both in his carries and his catches. Now it's second down and 10. Souza over the middle of Cam Jones, nine yards on the slant and close to a first down. We'll go for the third and one conversion now. Souza to Kenny Harrison, but he can't hang on. Saw the incoming hit and dropped the football. And Tulane holds Eric Souza and the UTSA offense. Joseph back on offense, now he throws it left side, and what a catch here by Rush. Xavier Rush goes out of bounds for a first down, and then Joseph comes out of the shotgun, wants to run option, and the defensive end, William Ritter, comes down and just tackles Joseph immediately. It's only a loss of a couple of yards, and now they have their backup quarterback in the game. Powell's going to send it long, and Justin Shackelford jumps up and snags at the 37-yard line of UTSA. A big gain on the play. And their quarterback currently is the redshirt freshman, Devin Powell, who's going to send another deep ball to the end zone. Triple coverage picked off by Alondre Thorne. It'll be a touchback for UTSA, getting the ball at their own 20. Both quarterbacks now have a pair of interceptions in the first half, and Eric Sos is trying to avoid going three and out on this possession. Third down and five for Eric Sosa wants Cam Jones and overthrows him badly off of his break. 
Had a little bit of an open window and he missed it. So second down and two for Tulane back on offense. Orleans Darkwa finally finds some open room in the running game as he gets a first down. And Powell is still in the game, by the way, as he throws over the middle. And Justin Shackelford makes another great grab. It was a tight window right there. Powell's made a couple of nice throws, and now it's first and ten play action to Darkwa, and he's going to go to the end zone. It's nearly intercepted by Kyle Nichols, who was beat on that last second touchdown last game, and appears to be playing a lot better goal line defense. Now it's third and five. Powell quick out right side. It's caught by Rush. Xavier Rush out of bounds, and it's going to be first and goal, and he's had an empty backfield. Here comes the blitz from UTSA, and Powell goes down. Sacked by Cody Rogers. He has been playing great football in the second half of the season. Now it's third and goal. Powell looking to get this one in the end zone for six. End zone. Where was this one going? That one was really intended for nobody, it looked like. Kick is up and good, so it's 3 0 Tulane just before halftime. We're going to go to the third quarter now. Only three points. That's pretty crazy right now. Powell option left side. Pitches to Orleans. Dark one. He goes nowhere. Tackle for a loss of five on the play. We'll go to second down and 15. Powell hands off to Darkwa right side. Nope, you're not going to get past Steven Kerfis. No way. That brings up a tough third and 16. UTSA jumps off sides. Powell finds Wilson Van Hooser. He's got the first down regardless of the penalty. And that keeps the drive alive for Tulane as UTSA wants to send another blitz. But Orleans Darkwa takes the carry the other side. And he's got running room and he breaks a tackle with a flag on the play. This one likely coming back. And indeed, it was holding on the offense, so we'll go ahead to second down and six. Man in motion, Powell hands off to Kelly now. He's got a big gain, a big first down the gut. He's up to the UTSA 35 yard line on his first carry of the game. Now it's second and 10. Powell hands off to Orleans Darkwa on the draw. He's got another first down for about 15 yards as he gets inside the red zone. There are his numbers on the day 12 carries, 55 rushing yards. And they're going to need one yard on this play to get a first down. Third and one. Kelly in the backfield. Powell's going to pass. Throws quick to the outside. It's caught by Steven Succi. I'm not even sure how to say that. He's into the end zone for a two-lane touchdown as they extend their lead to 10 to nothing over UTSA. And just there was no coverage on him on this play. I'm not even sure how to say his name, but it was a great play. Broke a tackle. Ran over Kyle Nichols. And that extends Tulane's lead to 10 to nothing. So UTSA comes out. And remember what sparked them last game. It was an 80-yard read option by Eric Souza, but Tulane comes down, puts both safeties in the box. So Souza calls an audible. They gotta snap the ball quickly here. Five seconds left on the play clock. Souza making an adjustment and dropping back to pass. Here comes the blitz. It's picked up by Banks. He rolls out to the left, and there goes Souza. First down across the 50 to the 40. Hit out of bounds. It's a big gain anyway from Eric Souza. He knew how to spark this team. He had to do it one way or another. Now handoff to David Glasgow out of the shot. Gun goes up ahead, eight yards up the middle. Second and two coming up now for Eric Souza with David Glasgow to his right out of the shotgun. Back to throw, taken off now. Souza first down and more. Not sliding, is hit at the 17-yard line, and he is shaken up. So enter John Simmons, who could potentially be one of our quarterbacks, who could actually be our starter next year. So watch him throughout the rest of this game, because Eric Souza, I'm afraid, is not going to return. And so it's second and ten now, looking around option to Anthony Banks. Goes left side, it's covered beautifully. He pitches it, though, and Banks gets open and gets a about three or four yards in the option, making it third down and six coming up. UTSA trying to get on the board for the first time in this game. And Simmons in the pocket, good protection, going over the middle. It's caught Cam Jones, first down inside the 10-yard line to the six. There you can see it. Eric Souza, bruised elbow, will not return to this game late in the third quarter. It's now John Simmons' turn. Can he lead UTSA back? Pass over the middle. It's nearly intercepted. Luckily, it wasn't. It will allow UTSA to kick a field goal. Finally have their first points in the game. And now kick it off deep to Orleans. Dark one in his own end zone. Takes it up the middle. Looking for some blocking. He's taken down from behind. A flag is down on the play. It's going to be holding on to Lane. This is pretty big here because UTSA is down by seven. Doesn't want to give up another score to keep it a one-score game. And so Tulane is backed up to their own 10-yard line. And look at Xavier Rush drop this wide-open first down grab. Would have gone for at least 15 yards. Now handoff Orleans. Darkwell up the middle. Gets a few. They'll call it four. Third and six coming up now. Can UTSA get their offense back on the field? Powell quick pass to Shackleford. He drops it now. And he's hit by Steven Kerfis over the middle. Would have been short of the first down it looked like. 
but the defense does its job, and now it's the offense's turn to go tie this game in the fourth quarter. Anthony banks up ahead for a few yards, and now it's third down and six. And the two-lane crowd is getting into this game as Kenny Harrison can't even hear the play call. He comes over to Simmons and listens in, and now it's third and six. Simmons the throw, passes out of the backfield. Glasgow, he can't hang on. That will bring up fourth down and six. UTSA is going to go for it. Needs six yards for the first down. Simmons out of the shotgun. Doesn't like what he sees initially. Steps up in the pocket. Fires to Jones. Who makes the catch? What a play by Cam Jones to get open and make the grab for a first down conversion. And now Simmons back to throw again. Going to throw it long. He's got Cam wide open. Touchdown, Roadrunners. Cam Jones ties this game up at 10 apiece with his 36-yard touchdown reception. And now two lanes back on offense with this tie game. Powell under pressure. He goes down. Ritter hit him, and he was cleaned up on the right side by Neal. Second down and 17 now. Handoff Orleans Darkwell. He's going nowhere. Tackled immediately after a gain of one. And that'll bring up a third down and 16. Can UTSA stop Tulane here? Powell, a clean pocket to throw from. Steps up in the pocket. Going to heave it long right side. Nearly intercepted. Should have been an interception for Nick Johnston. But either way, UTSA has the football now. Glasgow stretch play. Left side. He's got nine yards, making it third down and one. Bringing the fullback. Now handoff Glasgow. He'll get close, and they'll get him the first down. UTSA working in two-lane territory under three minutes ago. Now Simmons back to throw. Dodges the pressure, but then goes down. A loss of eight on the play. Back into UTSA territory for second down and 18. And Simmons fires to the outside. And he throws an interception. It's a second on the day for Strozer. Wanted Jeremiah Moeller. Bad decision by Simmons, and now Tulane has the football again. 2.22 to go. Powell back to throw out of the gun. He's got good protection, though. Stepping up in the pocket, looking to take off. Plenty of room to run. Across the 30 to the 20, he's got the first down and much more. He's down to the 16-yard line for a first down. And now just over two minutes ago, Powell's going to throw again. He wants to go right side. It's caught by Van Hooser on the right sideline inside the five-yard line. Out of bounds at about the two or three-yard line. First and goal, bubble screen to rush, and he's wrapped up immediately by Nick Johnston for no gain. On second and goal, Tulane comes out in the power run formation. I form with Darkwell in the backfield, takes the handoff up the gut, spins to the outside, open room. What a spin move by Orleans Darkwell. He gets into the end zone, and Tulane has their second touchdown of the day, giving them a seven point lead with only a minute 32 to go. And UTSA now feeling the ensuing kickoff. Kenny Harrison from his own goal line blocks up to the 30, and he's loose to the 40. Across midfield, one man to beat. Harrison puts on the Jets to the 10 5 touchdown Roadrunners. They get it back immediately on the ensuing kickoff and once again it's a tie game. Devin Powell comes out trying to lead the two lane offense back down the field throws it to his tight end it's picked off it's Cody Rogers another big play from Cody Rogers late in the game it's another interception that gets UTSA the football at the 27 yard line of Tulane with only a minute 13 to go. Simmons out of the shotgun got Banks to his left handoff going up the right side nowhere to go he's tackling the backfield loss of two can't afford to lose too many yards on this side of the field. You don't want to knock yourself out of field goal range. Second down and 12. Simmons under pressure, rolling to his left. Can't find anybody to throw it to. He takes a sack at the 34-yard line. And UTSA is on the edge of field goal range. So they have to get a few yards here to make it a lot more safer of an attempt. Simmons gives to Banks, going right up the middle. He has room. He's got about 10 yards on the carry. 13 call it. And now UTSA can call a timeout with just a couple seconds left on the clock and attempt the game-winning field goal. And so here it is. Sean Ayano going to be a 38-yard attempt. They have iced him. Two seconds to go. This is the last play of regulation. Ayano's kick is up. And UTSA is victorious again. Three wins in four weeks in the second half of the season. Coming on strong to finish the year. Another nail-biting thriller here in the UTSA Dynasty. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, I would appreciate it if you would leave a like on the video, please. And if you're new to my channel, be sure to subscribe for much more to come. Going to be going to Season 3 very soon after one more game to conclude the year. Got to give it up for both of the defenses in this game. They played phenomenal. There was five interceptions total, and UTSA got one in the most key situation. And next up, UTSA finishes their season against their rivals, the Texas State Bobcats in the I-35 rivalry. And so we conclude Season 2 next up, guys. And that means the off-season live stream is coming up probably this weekend. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. And I'll see you guys next time.